Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Kelvin and if you don't know me, it's probably because you've not yet subscribed to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be giving you the easiest but effective ways you can use to remove background in Photoshop. Without wasting much time, let's get into the video. But please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe if this video helps you. Let's get into it. So the first thing I often like to do is to duplicate my layer. So I'll hit Ctrl J on my keyboard. I'll hit Ctrl J on my keyboard to duplicate this layer so that I'll get an extra layer that if I want to make any changes, I can come back to and make. And then I'll turn this layer I icon off like this, right? So the first step that would use to remove our background is the object removal tool, and that is work. So let's get it. So you come to this particular side, you select it, and then you right click and make sure object selection tool is selected like this. You select the object selection tool. And then what I want you to do is to make sure this rectangle is chosen here, right? Don't choose the lasso. With this method, choose the rectangle, just as you can see here. And select the top layer that you just created, right? And what I want you to do is to stand at any particular point distant from what you want to select. So let's say I want to select this thing here, right? But I'll stand at a distant point and then draw a rectangle around that shape that I want to select like this, right? And I'll leave it. So Photoshop would analyze whatever is inside our selected area, right? And then if you look at this image, it's only the Adobe Illustrator logo that I have in that selected area. So it'll be very easy for Photoshop to analyze. And when I remove my mouse, you can see that Photoshop has, let me zoom in, you can see that Photoshop has selected it. So to remove the background, you just come down here, you just come to this particular part where they've written add max, right? And then you do it. So when you hit on it, you can see that it has been removed, the background has been removed. So you now have a background free layer you can work with, as simple as that, right? Let's move to the second method to removing backgrounds in Photoshop. Let me hit Ctrl Z on my keyboard. Okay. So the next method that you'll be doing is, looking at this image, you can see that aside the Adobe Illustrator color in brown and this AI in yellow, the background color is in white, right? So Photoshop has a preset that you can use to easily remove this different white background color, right? And please take note, this only works when the colors are different, right? So what you do is you come, you come to select, and when you come to first, make sure that your layer is selected, and then you come to select, when you come to select, you come and choose color range, okay? So when you select color range, you make sure you come and pick this pen icon, right? So you pick this pen icon, then you come and hit on the white area, right? Because that's the background we don't want. So you make sure that you are selecting your white area, right? You select your white area. That is what you should be doing. You make sure that your white areas are selected, right? So you select all your white areas, right? And when you are done, you come and hit invert, right? So when you hit invert, you hit on OK. Right, so when you do that, Photoshop will select the part that you didn't select out. So you just come and do the same thing by coming to add a layer max here, click on it, and then you have a background free layer. I hope these two methods worked out for you. Let's move on to the other methods that you can use in removing backgrounds in Photoshop. So I'll come to this particular image right here, okay. So let's say you have a sky in your image and then you want to select it. Manually selecting this thing will be very tedious, right? So Photoshop already has a pre-made that you can use to change your skies in Photoshop or you can use to select your skies, right? So the first thing I always said you do is what? Make sure this layer is selected and hit Ctrl J on your keyboard to duplicate this, right? So after duplicating it you come to select make let's turn this off you come to select and then you come and choose sky right so when you choose sky photoshop will do the same thing that i did in the first one but this time analyze just the sky so if i'm to hit backspace on my keyboard you can see that the skies have been deleted right if i hit control z the skies will come back and photoshop also has a way of changing your sky that is if you want to do that but that is not the reason why i'm making this video if you want me to make a different video on it you let me know so i'll do it right but just as i'm saying you can just delay this sky by hitting backspace and control d and then you just pick a different sky from any image to replace this particular sky that has been selected so this is how you can select skies in photoshop let's move on to our next way of selection okay so let's say we have this image here right and then we want to remove the man from the image as fast as possible first of all what do we do we hit ctrl j to duplicate our layer we turn off the down layer and then on this selected layer we come to its properties right you hit on the properties if you can't find the properties you come to windows and then you make sure properties is checked right to make sure properties is checked so it is open here right now when you come to it you come and look down here photoshop has some quick actions for you right so you can either choose remove background or select subject depending on what you want to do in our case we want to remove background but oftentimes selecting subject is best but let's try the two so that i'll explain to you so let's hit remove background first 
So you wait for Photoshop to analyze whatever it is doing. And then after some time, boom, your background is gone without you doing any work or doing little work, right? Now let's hit Control D, Control Z, sorry, to bring back there. And then let's now select select subject, right? Let's look at something here. So when you hit select subjects, Photoshop sometimes gives you extra things that you can do, extra places that you didn't select. So when you carefully look at the image, you can see that some parts have not been selected, right? So you can manually do your own selections, but that's not the purpose of this video. So after this, if you choose the select subject, you now have to come and hit add a layer max and then the background is gone, right? So the two ways are another easy ways that you can use to remove your background in Photoshop. Now let's move to the best way you can use to select subjects in Photoshop. It's very simple. Let's get into it. And if you haven't subscribed by this time, kindly hit the subscribe button so my channel reaches out to a lot of audience. Let's get into it. So this method is what I often use in removing backgrounds when I'm creating my thumbnails and other things. So you come to the polygonal lasso tool like this. You make sure the polygonal lasso tool is selected. If you can't see it, it's the third option in the tools bar, right? So you come to the polygonal lasso tool. And when you select it, if it's this subject, let me hit this key. Excuse me. If it's this subject that I want to select, right? First of all, first of all, let's duplicate our layer. So control J on our keyboard, we turn off the down layer. We do this because we want to get an image. In case maybe we destroy this image, you can easily delete this image and then use our second image. That's why we often duplicate it, right? Okay, so after selecting the polygonal lasso tool, what you do is you make sure you select closely around the subject that you want to, um, you make you select closely around the subject that you want to work with right so i want to select this subject in this instance so what do i do this is his dress right it's not necessary that you make it too close to him right but at least a gap close to him and i'll explain why we do that right so when you do this you just select closely it shouldn't be perfect selections you can just do this you come here you just do this you just so when you move the mouse then you hit click on your keyboard mouse so just as you can see me do, you just be selecting points close to him, right? The closer you get to him, the better, right? The closer you get to him, the better outcome you often get. Okay. And then when you come here, when you come to the ending point, Photoshop will give you a, this circle, so meaning you can now close it. So just as you can see, let me zoom out. Just as you can see, you can see that now a selection has been made, right? But this selection is not what you want to select. So you come and hit select and max up here, right? So Photoshop will take its time and then analyze this image. And now look at what will happen. When it analyzes this image, it will only select what you selected, right? So only what you selected would be shown there. So that's what you can see now. But we are not done. The next thing I will do is we now come and hit select subject up here. You can see select subject, right? So you click on select subject and then you hit OK. So when you do that, what you are doing is you give Photoshop a limited space to work with. So when you look at this image, because the surroundings are very little, Photoshop will know that this is the image that you actually wanted to select, working like the object selection tool, but a bit better than it, you get. So just as you can see, if you look at it, the edges have all been refined. No need for you to do any refinements on all those things because everything has been perfectly selected. And this is the best way to select things in Photoshop by my means so far. This is what I often use, right? So when you are done, another thing that can help you is to come to decontaminate colors, right? So that it will push in the parts that it tried to take away. And then if let's say your selection wasn't perfect, you can come and then come and hit smart radius and then you refine the edges a bit, right? But in my instance, these selections are quite perfect and quite good to go. So no need for me to waste my time. So when you are done, you just come and hit OK. And then just look at it. Just look at it. You have a very clean image, right? But when you look here, this is sometimes the thing that you often face. Because I didn't zoom in really well, you can see that it didn't select this part, right? But we can fix this. It's very simple. So to fix this, what you do is you come here, right? So when you look at this particular side, the selected subject is in white, right? And then the, um, the thing that we didn't want to select is in black when you look at this particular part carefully right so what you can easily do here is that let's take a look at this when you come to this erase tool let me come to the erase you can hit e on your keyboard right when you come to this erase tool if it's in white if it's in white look at what will happen if it's in white excuse me if it's in white you see that it gets to be cleaning it right but if it's in let me change it to black if it's in black you can see that it's introducing the 
pat back because when you look at the subject is in white meaning if it's in white i'm taking you away if it's in black i'm adding you so we hit x on our keyboard and then we'll just be taking the unwanted part away with our erase tool and this is no big deal you can just do this and then you'll be taking the parts that you don't want away. You just use it to refine your edges, right? Remember, if it's in black, you are introducing the parts you didn't want into it again. And if it's in white, you are taking away. So white for subtraction, black for addition. Just keep in mind, right? So we take you just zoom in and then you just be working with it, right? The reason why we didn't this part didn't select was I zoomed in the image too much. If you zoom in your image, well, these things wouldn't really be a problem. And oftentimes, I wouldn't use the downside of my, um, how should I say, my canvas, like this particular part. Oftentimes, I wouldn't use it. So, because this is how I zoomed it in. That's why that part couldn't select, you get. So, let me just hit Control Zero. So, oftentimes, this is what I'll do after this part. I only use this downside, so I'll just increase my erase to the size of my erase to hit shift on my keyboard and then i'll just clean the down part because i wouldn't be needing this part right so i can just work with my thumbnail this way this particular email i can just work with my thumbnail this way right you get please comment if you like please comment if you have any issue like if you like this video but make sure you subscribe because you watch this video and at least a payment for my time make sure you subscribe and it's free see you in my next one gang gang i'm out